Welcome everybody to this year's PitCon Live presentation for Will It Digest. We asked the people of Chicago what they would like to digest, and what do you think they said? Popcorn! Popcorn! Now, we couldn't digest just any popcorn. You can't just take, you know, just plain popcorn. So we looked at some caramel popcorn, some cheese popcorn, and one of my favorites is just the cheese corn. In my house, it doesn't last very long. But we ran into a little bit of a problem. We opened the bag and everybody ate it. So we had to find something else. And so we thought, what about the cheese? What about the dry cheese powder? And I just happened to have some. <laughs> that didn't drop. I just happened to have some that comes out of anywhere. So that's what we're going to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the remote lab here and we're going to set up the cheese powder in the microwave system and then I'll take a quick run through on how to reconstitute the dry powder so you can get a representative sample. So before we get started though, we got to do the one thing, got to have a little safety. You don't want you don't see me with yellow fingers coming back out. So let me get my gloves on here and then we're going to head into the laboratory. It's not as bad. My dry runs, my gloves were kind of sticky all the time, and there they go. But there we go. Let's go back inside. Got to make sure you're going to see me here. Be right back. Can you see me now? Uh, there you are. Okay, good. Now, what I'm going to do is take my reconstituted cheese powder sample in 5 ml of nitric, and I'm going to put it inside the microwave system, or actually put it in the rack up over here, and we're going to start the system. So it's going to pick it up and put it in the microwave cavity. So while that's doing that, let's go through how you prepare the sample to put it into the microwave system. When prepping samples like cheese powder or milk powder or any spray dried product, you have to get a homogeneous sample. Interestingly, powders are not homogeneous. So in order to get a good representative sample, we'll do a reconstitution. To reconstitute this cheese powder, I'm going to take 15 grams of the cheese powder and 85 mLs of water, and I'm going to add it directly in there. And what we want to do is we're going to let this stir at about 65 degrees C for five minutes to reconstitute it. Let's get that moving along. It's kind of clumpy. Now, I know you're not going to wait around five minutes. You probably get your phones out and check your email. So I happen to have two grams in my syringe right here. And I'm going to put it in my vessel with a stir bar. Let's go take that. And I'll take five mLs of my con nitric acid, pour it directly into there. And I cap off my vessel. Now, if you go through the math, I took two grams times a 15% on a weight-to-weight -weight basis. That's going to give us about 0.3 grams or 300 milligrams worth of a very homogeneous cheese powder sample. Now, we've got it in the system. It's going to prepare. And while it's doing the digestion, let's go back and take a little history of popcorn. This help, this help nowadays, you have to go look pretty hard for it. <laughs> Never know what they're going to do. Well, while the sample's digesting, what we're going to do is take a little history tour. Now, the cheese powder's kind of dry, so we're going to take a look at popcorn. Come on, dry, dry, pun, okay, here we go. We finally got past all that. Let's take a look at the history of popcorn. Well, the first evidence of popcorn goes back to 4700 BC from the Peruvian temples. Now we're going to fast forward about another 5,000 years. Everybody remember Columbus, 1492, sailed the ocean blue, discovered America. But in addition, while he was in the Americas, he discovered popcorn and brought it back to the European continent. So that's how they learned about popcorn. Paul, did your Brits know about this? They know this history? Okay. 
I just, I just want to make sure. Now, Chicago's probably the popcorn capital of the world, and that's, that's going to be due to George Creeters. George Creeters was a candy store operator back in the late 1900s. And in his candy stores, he sold a lot of roasted peanuts. And he got the idea of popping his popcorn in his peanut roaster. Well, as it turns out, his peanut roaster didn't give him very even heating, and he got some burnt corn and un unpopped corn. And then in 1885, he came out with the first commercial steam-operated popcorn popper. And it did a great job. It's very even heating. All his kernels came out nice and puffy. And he could even add his seasonings in there. And then, as his business grew, he got into what's termed nowadays. Everybody know about supply chain management? Everybody heard this term? Well, George got into supply chain management, and he hooked up some horse-drawn carriages to carry on his popcorn poppers. And he brought them out to the fairs and the big international expos and increased his business significantly. And then depression came around and popcorn got another little boom because of very low cost and people started eating more popcorn. And then it hit the movie theaters. The first industrial grade popcorn popper was in 1938, hit the movie theaters. And then in 1981, General Mills came along and introduced microwave popcorn. And our consumption exploded at that point in time. We're doing a little over a million pounds per year. And then of course, just to the north of us, we got our friends who do a good bunch of cheese up there in Wisconsin. Makes for a real night edition. That's where you get your cheese, dry cheese powder for your popcorn. So a little history on popcorn and is our sample getting done? What does it look like? It looks like we're pulling out the sample. So let's go take the sample out of the system, transfer it to an Erlenmeyer flask, dilute it, and see if we've got a digested dry cheese powder. Fred, how are we doing? OK, the SPD has returned the vessel with the digested sample back to the rack. There we have a slight greenish tint to it. Let's transfer it over to the Erlenmeyer flask, and then we'll dilute it with water to see if we have a clear solution or not. Now, we're doing this outside of the fume hood, and the OSHA police are not here. So we'll pass on, on this this time, but normally you want to do it in the fume hood. Get a nice dilution. Looking clear to me. It says, will it digest dry cheese powder? Yes, it can. Yeah. Everybody, thank you much. We've got real popcorn if you want it. Uh, no more cheese popcorn, but we've got the real stuff. Try it out. Thank you much.